guys welcome back to radical living podcast hope you are all ready for your christmas this year i know it's looking a lot uh, different for all of us hope you've got your uh, well first of all i hope you enjoyed my rendition of silent night um, and you decide to listen to the rest of this podcast hope you guys have got all your christmas presents ready and uh, you just have an amazing christmas with your family and um, we have got two episodes left of 2020 which is just crazy This episode, I sat down with Matthew Boyd, who is a very good friend of mine. He is a husband, a father, a minister. He is currently player manager for a Hockle Thistle, uh, one of the local football teams. Thankfully, when I asked Matthew the question of what football team he supports, he gave me a good answer and he said Nottingham Forest. So yeah, Matt, I'll let you I'll let you live with that one. Um, But we pick up this conversation where I have asked Matthew to share uh, a little bit of his career in football and what he is currently doing. Throughout this conversation, we chat about faith and football. We chat about coaching and leadership and hopefully something that Matthew says really resonates with you and challenges you um, to embark in this journey of radical living. So we'll get straight into the episode where Matt begins to tell us about his career. Um, football wise was something that I always enjoyed doing at primary school I I remember playing for the primary school team whenever I was in P4 Uh, that wasn't because I was overly good but it was because I went to Glenarm (laughs) primary and (laughs) in order to make up the numbers a couple of us who were in P4 had to play uh, along with the along with the P7s and the older guys Um, and so just really enjoyed that played then Calibike Blues through some of the year groups there And then went to actually the wee spell of playing rugby at school, um, a wee break from football for a couple of years, and then came back, played football for my local club, Glen Arm Rovers. Um, started playing there when I was about 15, 16, um, a couple of seasons with them. Then we, as family, we moved up to Brescian, and okay. so then I signed for Race View at that stage um, yep. and played for them for a while. Got the opportunity to go into Balamina United then when I was about 22. Uh, spent a year there and then went down to Limavari and played uh, a season down with them and uh, managed to finish bottom of the, the <laughs> RS League but it was nice to, well, still <laughs> nice to, got, yeah. to be, got to be the tail of a lion yeah. for, for a year rather than the, the head of a mouse yeah. um, after that then went back to back to Race View uh, and played there went back into Balmina for one more year then was about 27, 28 and then back to Race View and then played went to Hoggle then I've been at Hoggle for about six seasons I think it is okay um and yeah really enjoy it there and just at the start of last season um the guy who was manager uh, yeah. approached myself and another guy in the team Gavin Gilmore and Very asked good. if the two of us would be interested in in taking it on kind yeah. of as, as player managers yeah. um and Gavin player assistant so um we both were keen to and uh, yeah that's what we're we're up to now did you ever see just kind of leading on into that then because i was going to say what was it made you want to manage and and coach but is that something that you saw yourself doing eventually or was it something that was just asked of you and had you been thinking about it prior to that i think it's always been something that that i've been interested in growing up even like I suppose like any any boy who's into football I yeah. spent wasted far too much time playing things like football manager <laughs> yeah. and thought that uh, I was going to be the next uh, the next pep or uh, uh, the next Alex Ferguson but uh, I think the the players that I I liked growing up were yes. were something you know boys like Terry Sheringham I was a Forest fan I still am a Forest fan okay. but uh, Terry Sheringham was was more of my favorite players for uh, whenever he was at Forest and and then boys like Dennis Burkamp in terms of watching that like yes. players that were were clever and were able to like there's an intelligence about them in terms of they were able to see things in yep. the pitch that other people didn't couldn't see, didn't see or, or couldn't see um and so i was always kind of fascinated by that and then just i suppose from that there was an interest just in the kind of tactical side of things and yeah 
probably more so in a bit of a like a problem solving type way yeah. where you come up against different formations or you come up against people who are you know causing problems uh, on the t- on the pitch or to your team um, or giving you difficult it's like how do we counteract that how can yeah. we you know set up in a way that uh, that kind of nullifies their threat whereas they ain't giving us an opportunity to to go and, and yeah. to play and to win the game so that's that side of things has always interested me sort of looked into it and yeah I suppose I was always open. I was always open yes. to the to the opportunity if it came up. I wouldn't have said I will be a manager yes. or it's my ambition to to be there. But I was very much open open to it. Very good. Just kind of still going on from the being a coach and the coaching aspect of it. What are some of the challenges, just purely from a coaching perspective? Obviously, you touched on the tactical aspect. Like any game you play, there's always going to be a problem coming at you um but what are some maybe of the other challenges that you found from being a player um that is different from to being a coach i think probably probably the big challenge <laughs> for me is whenever you have to leave boys out yeah and, and particularly having been a been a player and so it's it's my mates it's boys that i've played with yeah. um that i'm close to and i know i still although I'm a manager, I still consider myself a player, you know, you, yeah. you, you want to play and, and even if the manager gives you a good reason why you're not picked, you're still disappointed. Yeah. And so I, I know that and I feel that and and there's times then whenever you're having to say to a boy, you're not in the, you're not in the 11 today yeah. and that's like the guys have been good and they've accepted that but that's still probably the, the hardest part yeah. is the most difficult there's no easy way to say to no. someone you're not and particularly if you're playing in a big game in terms of semi-final or final that's when everybody yeah. wants to play and wants to be involved and so uh, it's in those where you have to make the the difficult calls the at, at times that's probably the biggest yeah. challenge for me i think is and that. it probably doesn't get easier like i i take under 15s boys and like even no matter how young they are no matter how old they get it is very hard telling somebody you've just <laughs> you've just whatever the reason is it's it's not easy um but what are some of the the benefits to coaching like what is it that you enjoy about it um c- and being a player has that helped your perspective on how to coach i think so there's probably a lot of stuff that both kind of good examples and and maybe some more negative examples in terms of man yeah. management and things that I've learned yeah. from coaches um, and been around uh, a few different different clubs as I yeah. mentioned earlier there's lots of stuff that I've picked up and so I feel yeah. like I know things that have worked for me and then things yeah. that, that maybe haven't worked and and I get I think probably one of the things that I love like I, I love people and so yeah. I, I love that kind of relational aspect of things yeah. and so while there is that that does make it challenging whenever you're <laughs> you're dropping boys yes there's also i love the opportunity to just draw alongside guys and say yeah. you know they've maybe made a mistake but actually you're saying no oh, listen that this doesn't define you you yes. know actually we still have confidence in you you know you're good enough you know keep going on yeah. to encouraging them to, to pick their head up other things you're maybe just giving them wee pointers here and there just positionally yes. in terms of or just watch out whenever you're receiving the ball just trying to open up your body shape and just yes. little things little like things. that 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 hopefully make a difference to them, make them better players, yeah. help them to grow in their confidence. And I think that's one of the things that, that excites me about coaching is whenever you look and, and you've worked with a guy for a year yeah. and you can see how, how he's improved and he's progressed uh, and and that's your you're playing a small, small part in yeah. that. That's down to their attitude and their willingness to work and to take Absolutely. things on board. But just the fact that you've maybe played a small part in that is it's yeah, rewarding. that's rewarding and, yeah. and one of the things that I yeah, love about it. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of pros and cons to it. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far and what Matt has to say. This is just a reminder to go and check out Radical Living Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts and YouTube. Um, Really value your support and we love you guys and appreciate you so much. Um, And this is just a reminder to make sure to like, subscribe, share and follow all of our stuff. We want to share this podcast with as many people as possible. 
jumping straight back into the conversation with Matthew, um, he is making the connection between faith and football and throughout the rest of this conversation um, we chat about what it means to be radical um, but we also talk about how Matthew uses his faith um, uh, and how he plays and how he manages. Hope you guys enjoy. For me, kind of football's played a big part in my faith journey yes. as well, and the two have kind of went side by side. When I grew up, I, I was always passionate about sport and passionate about football, and struggled a wee bit with the aspect of how does football fit with faith. I sometimes tell a story of I grew up in a country church in Glenarm, Presbyterian, and all the rest of my family were musical. And so there were different Sundays whenever, like, literally my whole family would have been up playing, you know, a piece during the offering. Yeah. Dad would have been on the guitar, mum would have been playing piano, yeah. sisters would have been playing flutes and violins. And, and I, was down in the, I was down in the congregation. And, and I sometimes say, you know, nobody ever invited me up to do keepy ups in church. Yes, yeah. and, you know, and that's sort of like, it's not appropriate, you don't do that. But sometimes for me, the two were divorced yes. growing up. And what God used to, to really speak into my life was one time whenever I was at, at Sism uh, and I had to share the story of Eric Little, the, the athlete yeah. in terms of Torrance of Fire. And it was the aspect of his, um, where he was someone who took his faith seriously and took his sport seriously. And he uses the, the line, you know, in terms of God made me fast. And when I run, I, I feel his pleasure. And that just really, it was a light bulb moment for me in terms yeah. of actually that the way I play sport and the way I use my attitude towards sport can be something that, that honours God and, and brings glory, glory to him. I didn't need to see this as this negative thing, you know, where I had to make a, make a choice between either I yeah. love football or I love Jesus, but I'd yeah. see the two could combine. And, and now there was a, a bit for me I needed to realise, you no know, football in some ways have become was in danger of becoming my god and my idol and so there was football yeah. needed to be in its right place but i understood that the two tied together and so from that i think i've always tried to do just in terms of the way i play yeah. and the way i carry myself that i want to do that in a way that represents jesus yeah. well and, and so whenever it comes to to managing and to making decisions i would like boys to say that i'm i'm fair yeah. You know, in terms of that I'm, that I'm honest, that I'm straight with them. Whenever I'm talking to new players and I'm signing them, I, I tell them that I'll give them an opportunity. If they've got the shirt, they keep it. And, and that's the way, for me, that's important. Yes. I think that's the way I do it. I don't want to be giving boys false promises or to build them up and to say, oh, you're going to play every week. And then they turn around to me in two months' time and say, hold on, you, you lied to me. Yeah. You know, and so that kind of kind of straight talking just i say yeah. trying to be consistent and in, in what you do there'll be things that you decide to do that boys won't won't agree with and that's mm -hmm. understandable but but being open to open to learning and open to criticism you know kind of like where your door's open if someone has a yeah. problem you're saying come to me you know you can say anything to me you can say it to me whatever way you want as yeah. well you know if you're angry yeah. shout at me and I, i'm i'm willing yeah. to, to take that or i'm willing to sit down and to have a conversation with guys all of that kind of yeah. i just think what i what i do i want to do in a way that i say that honors jesus that represents him well and where i suppose it stirs up an interest yeah in jesus yeah for for the guys are, the guys around me uh and so i'm yeah i try and try and do that as yeah. best as best i can i think uh, just a couple of things you said there just i think are really important not just for um like our faith you know being uh followers of jesus but also like from a coaching perspective if somebody's listening to this who is a coach if somebody's listening to this and they're just a normal person and doing whatever profession they're in it's trying to be approachable and it's trying to have integrity um because you don't want to say one thing to a player and then go and do something else so it's really admirable that you're trying to keep that integrity not just from a christian perspective but also just as a person um because i think this world can be everybody's ambitious and and wants you know what's best for them or what they're doing but it's actually you no know, the doors open come and tell me how you're feeling come and tell me if you're mad at me if you're happy with me if you agree with me if you don't um and i think that's really important uh, for any relationship whether it be between a manager and a player 
whether it be between two friends, whether it be between a believer or somebody who's never thought about faith. Um, I just think that's really, really important um, for anybody listening to this. So you're doing a good job. Thank <laughs> you. You're doing your best. No, that's it. And I suppose it's that, picking up on that, it's people, we sometimes think that people are stupid or don't see through things. Whereas actually they're people, watching. They, they're watching and it, and it is whether you're a Christian or not, people know if yeah. you back up what you say yeah. or if you say one thing and do another in any way, walk of life, you'll lose credibility. Yeah. And, and then I think particularly as a manager where you're in a position of influence, then if you lose your credibility with your players, yeah. you've, you've lost them in a yeah. sense. And there are times, sometimes you get it wrong and you hold your hands up and you apologize. Yeah. And so that's, that's different. Yeah. But if you're consistently saying one thing and doing another, yes. it's gone and you're yeah. going to, the team aren't going to yeah. be as successful yeah. as you want them to be or, yes. or the relationship's not going to be the way you want it to be. Absolutely. Um, in a, in yeah. Just going on from what we've been talking about, do you find it, are, are most players or most people open to talk about faith? Is it, you know, not just with your players, but even people with the club and other coaching staff, is that something that comes easily? Is it something that um, opportunities are always there or they're maybe dripped in? Um, how is that to share your faith? And is it just about leading by example? I, I think for me, and I'm aware that for me as a, as a minister, in some ways that makes my job harder because yep. there's extra scrutiny but in other ways it makes it much easier for me f to let people know who i am and, and i'm a christian yeah. you know, so people know straight away so the the kind of the introduction of hi i'm i'm matthew and, and i'm a i'm a christian that's that's easy i don't have have to have those those awkward conversations because it's very quickly it's when you're guesswork. asking them what do you yeah. do oh what do you do i'm a minister oh right uh, that's it <laughs> then they then they know they get it. um and they understand i think with our with the guys that i that i play with and, and play against sometimes it is there's there's opportunities where i may be inviting them along to to some things whether it's in in church or a kind of specific sports quiz that like yeah. the christian sport have ran in the past or there's some of those that you're inviting people to mm -hmm. sometimes you're just looking for wee opportunities as they come up and in terms of you know that something's going on in people's lives yeah. where someone's lost their job or someone close to them has has is sick or is in hospital or has passed away and sometimes it for me it's just a text message that's just saying listen just praying for you yeah. at the minute in this situation if you need to chat you can or maybe you're arranging to to meet up with them and to, to have a conversation with yeah. them J sometimes just about life and yeah and a, and a lot of times i I nearly allow the, the faith stuff to come from them. So if they want to ask questions or they want to chat about yeah. it, if the conversations naturally come going in that direction, I'm, yeah. I I don't I don't shut it down. I don't always like I'm not going in at training every night yeah. and thinking I need to have a conversation about Jesus yeah. here, you know, right here, yeah. or else that's that's been a failure yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. But I think it's that long longevity almost in terms of you're you're with the guys, you're building connections with and relationships, you're earning earning their trust, earning the right to to share yeah. with them. And then it's it's kind of trying to pick pick your moments. And it it would surprise you sometimes, people who are who are interested, sometimes it's even yeah. in, on nights out whenever you're um sort of end of season dinners and stuff. And yes. sometimes people get a quiet moment there. And I want to ask you something or want to chat yeah. about something. Or sometimes it's just like they're interested in, in what I do or what that's about. And, yeah. and so there's kind of, there's no one, one size fits all with yeah. it. It's, I think it's for me, it's, it's praying for opportunities, yeah. praying for my own witness and praying for those, the guys as well. And then just being open to them as well. Yeah. I know for me, there's times that I can shut down the conversation yeah. in a way that's more just because of me and I'm, I've made the decision that they'll not be interested. Yeah. And so I try more to be open to that to, and, yeah. and to kind of open up conversations. And then if they want to shut them down, then that's they fine. Can. Where you're not, you don't want to force someone to go yeah. somewhere that they don't want to, to go. And also you're trusting that it's God and his spirit that's working in people's Absolutely. lives as well. So 
yeah, I can't do what God's spirit can. So no, that's no. a that's a freeing thing for me yeah. as well. It takes the pressure off. And that's just yeah, just on on what you just said there about pressure. I think as Christians, well, well are we are, I, I think, um, well are, I think quite a lot of people in sport or if they're doing something, we tend to put pressure on ourselves that we must tell these people um, about our faith and we must do this and do that. But actually quite a lot of the time, if we look at Jesus' life and we look at whenever he was passing through towns or passing through villages, people were drawn to him because they saw something different. And he actually, whenever he spoke to people, I think of the woman at the well, him doing that was just radical anyway, because he shouldn't have been speaking to a woman. Um, uh, and, you know, he just he just started a general conversation and allowed it to unfold. And I think we can learn a lot from that. Um, and I think uh, just even how believers communicate the gospel and communicate about Jesus is changing all the time. Um, and Jesus being relational, would you say relational evangelism and building relationships, even though it's slower, is that the most effective way, especially in football, in your position, or are there I, other ways? I, I think there I think there are other there are other ways that people can do it. And some of it comes down to even your your personality type, you know, or just yeah. the way that God has has made each of us are unique, and so even if we're talk if we're talking about football, we'll maybe talk differently about yeah. it. And, and I think almost whenever you're it comes to sharing our faith, you want to share it in a way that's real for yeah. you and that's that's genuine. And and there are times whenever we're we're doing it, we're maybe doing things that make us feel slightly uncomfortable the first time we yeah. do it. So so asking someone if they can if we can pray for them or, yeah. or with them, that sometimes feels like, oh, I'm nervous about doing this, but actually I want to do it. Yeah. And there's a difference between that and someone saying like, you must go yeah. in and you must pray for that. You know, and I think it's that, that balance between being open to learning and learning from yeah. others a alongside then kind of like what was most natural for us. And, and I think for me, just with everything in, in life, I think, and it is I can see that in the the life of Jesus in terms of how relational he was with the disciples. He he yeah. invested time in them. He he walked with them. Even when Jesus was inviting people to come to him, he invited them to come and follow him. Yes. It wasn't an invitation into a relationship. It wasn't just you, you know must. it wasn't just like like my Facebook page and yeah. then that's it. You've done that. But it was this uh, this invitation into a relationship. And so I think for me in sport. It's how can I walk alongside these guys, yeah. trying to model to them something of who Jesus is, and and also modeling them into how much I need Jesus, and and also the yeah. difference that He has made in my life, and how that changes my perspective towards sport as well, but also then in a way that then allows me opportunities to to share Jesus with them. That that the ultimate sort of goal or dream with it is that they come to know Jesus yeah. themselves but even if they were to do that and to choose to follow Jesus I don't think my job would be finished with them I think no. it's then that how do I help to disciple them and yeah. nurture them in that faith so that's best done through relationship yeah. and close relationship rather than sometimes we try and do things from a distance and yeah. that's maybe okay for one-off conversations and whenever we're we're, we're sitting in an airplane beside, <laughs> beside someone yeah. but actually people that we're going to be living with and in and out of their lives week. we see them every week actually i think that being in it for the long term yeah. and trying to be consistent i find that to be most effective for yeah. from my perspective yeah no brilliant um just kind of something i wanted your opinion on and um being obviously you, you were saying earlier about how faith and football has kind of been on a steady journey with each other um how has that been like competitively do, do you think is it right for Christians to be competitive? Is there a balance? Because um, I know, like whenever you play and somebody comes in and does a really bad tackle, you're like, oh, I just want to get them back. <laughs> or so, you know, or you know, want to? Nah, we need to win. Is it all about balance? Is it? Um, how is, how have you found that? 
I suppose so. I've I've always I'm naturally competitive. Yeah. I naturally want to win in whatever I'm doing. Even if I'm playing my wee nephew a game of FIFA, I I don't want to let him win. No. I'm I'm happy for the the tables to be balanced, so he yes. gets to be Barcelona and I have to be Nottingham Forest. Yeah. So I'm at a disadvantage, and I'm I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. But I'm not letting him score. Yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. he he can beat me and he will beat me at times but i'm not letting him yeah. win kind of thing and so there's that that competitive thing that's that's part of me and i think as a christian we should want to do things to the best and want to do things yeah. with excellence I, I laugh sometimes whenever i'm playing football i'll i will miss time tackles or i'll you know yeah. foul people not intentionally never go out to intentionally hurt someone or yeah. that but sometimes it's just in the course of the game like you are it happens, it, it happens. And sometimes people criticize me and say, like, oh, you're supposed to be a Christian. And I sort of think, <laughs> well, I'm a human. <laughs> actually, like, God doesn't give me this ability to perfectly time it, yeah. a challenge. And I think also for with my with my teammates as well, like, if they see me pulling out of things or feel like I'm not committed, mm. that to me is not a, not a good witness in yeah. terms of they think, oh, well, Christians are flaky or whenever it gets tough you know, you can't count on them yeah. or you can't depend on them. And there's certain games that will come up and we'll play. And I, I tell our players, you need to be prepared to take a hit here in this game in terms of you're, you're holding up the ball and get your body in front of the ball and the defender's going to come in and he's going to rattle you. But you need to be ready to do that because if you're not, then you're jumping out of the way and you're scared and you're yeah. playing with fear. And I think if I'm asking others to do that, I need to prepa yeah. be prepared to to do that as well. Now there obviously are there are boundaries in terms of whenever you come into just cheating to win or go yes. on and that, and that's where whenever there there has to be a line and you say no, actually I'm going to do everything within the laws, the laws of the game, yeah. uh, to win. And I think in terms of being competitive. For me, one thing that's that's changed, and the one thing that I've I've grown in, or God's been teaching me in, is just that for football, so many of us, if you you win at the weekend, you have a great weekend, yeah. And it's almost like football defines our our happiness and defines our success. Our if rig. you lose, then it's just like don't look near us and don't don't talk yeah. to us for a while. And I think that perspective of knowing that having football in its right place for me so football is something to be enjoyed something it's a it's a gift yeah. that god's given us to to play and to do well and and to push yourself to do the best you can but football doesn't define me yeah. anymore and so if i win or i lose that that doesn't define me it doesn't mean i don't get disappointed i'm not yeah. upset whenever whenever things don't go well but it doesn't define me and the, the thing that really struck for me was it was a couple of years ago we were playing in a junior shield semi-final yep. uh, up at Seaview and the game went to penalties and uh, we ended up we got beat in penalties and I missed one of the kind of the crucial penalty to, that that lost <laughs> that, that ensured that we got, got yeah. beat uh, in it and I came away and as I was reflecting on it um, a, a while after I sort of was was thankful in a way that it was me that missed the penalty Yes. From the perspective of if we were going to lose, obviously I would prefer to win, but if we were going to yep. lose, I was glad that I had missed it because because I knew, actually, I'm not going to carry this for the rest of my life. You know, this is not going to weigh heavy on yes. me where I feel like I've let the boys down or I've disappointed them or I've, I'm a failure. And that my, my value's not yeah. in being able to, to score a goal. My value's in Jesus and what Jesus has yeah. done for me. And that's the same whether I score or whether I miss. I thought I can... I can carry this, not yeah. because of anything great in me, but because of what Jesus has done. And I say, God opened me, me up to that perspective. And I thought, I'm rather it was me that missed than one of our other players who would have always kind yeah. of kind of had to live with, yeah. with that. And I think that's just allowed me what I feel is kind of a healthy way to, yeah. to live. As I say, as I talked before, in terms of football at times, could have been and was in danger of being a night of, whereas now... It's like, no, Jesus yeah. is the one that yeah. I look to for, yeah. for worth and value and meaning and all of that in life. Yeah. And that frees me to go and enjoy my sport and yeah. and do it, do the best I can, but kind of see where that takes you. Absolutely. And I think it, you've obviously, with your career and stuff, you've gained a lot of experience throughout the years and that can help massively with players now who maybe, if they did miss a penalty, it would massively affect them 
psychologically um, and there's just there's a whole minefield with that um, but just kind of finishing us up and just something that really stuck stuck out to me whenever you were talking about the rest of your family being musical and you being the only like sporty one you know even that a lot of people would succumb to nearly that um, pressure or that expectation to try and be something that they're not but you know this podcast is it's called Radical Living and it's about going against the norm and even just you stepping out of that and you know going after what you love and 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 doing that and discovering a faith but also loving football what would you say to a player or an athlete or somebody to just be radical and sharing their faith if they are in a team or if they're on a platform you know not to shy away but to to share their story it's funny where I, I was thinking about this whenever you'd you'd sent through this question and and I thought it would be easy to say almost in order to be radical you do you do this this and this and then then you're radical yeah. but as I was kind of reflecting on it, I thought you, you can't be any more radical than than following Jesus yeah and then in a sense following him wherever he has placed you to be mm-hmm. and so wherever you are and whatever group of people around you are, are the people that god has called you to to live out your faith in front yeah. of and so whether that's in the in the orchestra yeah. or in your place of work or in your school yeah. uni uh your your job or on the sports pitch it's it's living out your faith and the values of jesus and as we walk with jesus jesus is going to challenge our mindset he's going to challenge our hearts he's going to challenge our our desires and our our passions and and all of that that's just a natural process of walking with jesus because god wants us to become more like jesus and and so therefore i need to grow in my love for for other people i need to die to self each day in terms of and to my desires and my ambitions and to kind of surrender them to god and and as you do that and live that out in front of other people they're they're gonna notice a difference because it's so countercultural. yeah you know in terms of you've got everyone that's that's kind of sport could be it's an ambitious place to be and people are driven yeah. and they want to reach the top and often the way that you're seen to, to reach the top is just by focusing on yourself you know be self-driven and yeah. all of that there and uh, but see you're showing a different way to go and actually if you want to be the greatest jesus talks about us becoming the servant of all yeah. and so thinking how can i serve my teammates and what does that look like to serve my teammates yeah. whether it's a, a word of encouragement whether it's the boy that's been picked ahead of you actually you go up and say go out and smash <laughs> it today yeah, you know yeah. in terms of going have a great game you know kind of think where you're genuinely cheering them on yeah. you know that's radical that's yeah that's yeah. countercultural. um but that's the way of of jesus yeah. and, and so i think in order to do that and the final thing i would just say in terms of is like don't be don't be scared to admit whenever you get it wrong mm-hmm. and that we're we're not the heroes in this story we're not perfect and we will make yeah. mistakes um and i remember we were playing the final at christmas and uh we got beat on penalties and after the game i just i was annoyed with the ref i didn't think he had a very good game and i just was rude to him i didn't swear because it's not part of my vocabulary but yeah. i just was rude and, and ignorant towards him and i came back and i was just really convicted about it just when i was having yeah. a quiet time and uh was out out in town and bumped into another ref and when I was chatting to him, I managed to get a number for the, the yeah. boy who refereed the match. I just sent him a message, just saying, listen, I'm really sorry for, you know, yeah. where I was speaking to you was out of line and all that. And so it's that. There are times, yeah. I say, when we'll go too far, we'll go beyond. But actually, we need to be willing to hold up our hands. Yeah. And I think in doing that, again, we're showing something different because yeah. the world will say, cover up your faults and hide your <laughs> hide your flaws yeah. and, and cover your, your sin as such. Whereas we're saying, no, actually, we're free to say we're okay we're not perfect because we know one who is perfect and that's jesus and be open about that as well and that's that's key i mean jesus didn't hide anything he was open um and yeah uh matthew thank you so much um for agreeing to do this and just what you said there about being radical it is a journey and sometimes like everything else in life we put it up on a, a a board and we try to achieve it and we try to get it um but actually, and it's just, it's something we have to do every day and choose to do every day. Um, and Jesus is the best example for that. Guys,
guys hope you enjoyed my conversation with Matthew um, and what he had to say uh, one thing that really challenged me from our conversation was that radical is a lifestyle it's not something that you do one minute and then don't do the next it's it's a choice that we make every single day and that's what we want to encourage you guys to do is to be radical and, and to make it a part of your life and um, please make sure to go and check out uh, all of our other episodes and make sure to tune in in a couple of weeks time for our last episode of 2020 uh, on behalf of everyone at radical living and coaching for christ we want to wish you guys a happy christmas and we hope you and your family have an amazing time um, seeing out this year and moving on to better things uh, guys make sure to go and like and subscribe follow and share our podcast as we want as many people to hear this as possible